Hello everyone, it's the interview queen Alicia Atut here and I'm so excited to welcome you all to my interview with bodybuilding legend Richard Gaspari. Hello. Oh, uh, hello, it's great to be here. I'll Thank be you on so Skype. much. <laughs> yeah, on Skype. Thank you so much for taking the time and for joining me today. Uh, no problem. I enjoy it. Awesome. Well, how are you holding up with everything going on right now? I know you're still keeping insanely busy, so tell me a little bit about how you're doing. So since pandemic happened, I guess it was mid-March, um, we were, you know, I had to really reconsider what I would do with my, my business because, you know, I have a, a supplement brand that I've had for the past 20, over 20 years. And looking at it, we were already changing and what's happening, the whole market is changing more to a direct-to-consumer model. I started in January, so I was ahead of basically what was going on. But when March happened, we had to accelerate the process of going direct to consumer. And I looked at it as an opportunity. A lot of companies, because of this pandemic, are you know, going out of business or you know, laying off people. What I did is I looked at it as an opportunity. We started coming up with new products, products for health products for immunity. Uh, I launched six new products during this whole pandemic. Um, did a lot of uh, paid advertising, grew my uh, team with athletes uh, to do a lot of organic marketing. And we were able to really become more successful and actually grow sales that we were kind of being, um, we, were de we were actually a little down. And because other companies kind of fell through the wayside, We've actually picked up their sales and growing. Now we are seeing, you know, some retails retailers opening up. So now we're starting to pick them up. But you know, I really believe now that the market today is more of a direct to consumer uh, than trying to sell to a distributor than selling to a retailer. Uh, when you sell direct to consumer, you can cause that demand for people to buy your brands. So I'm excited. We we launched like those. Um, those health products, immunity products. I just launched uh, Fat Burner, and over July fourth, and it was super successful. We had an unbelievable sale. Um, sold out the product, so we're making more. I got a couple new products we're making. So right now, it's been like, knock on wood, it's been very good for me. I'm not gonna. I don't like to brag while people are losing jobs and. But, you know, you have to evolve in periods like this. And the one thing I've always believed in is, you know, a positive, you know, attitude in, in anything you do. If you look at the glass half full, you're always able to come up with ideas and solutions. And because I've been doing this so long, I said, let me think of solutions to grow this brand and make it stronger. And we were able to, we were able to do that. So I'm excited to say that, you know, Gaspari Nutrition, this is a reemergence of Gaspari Nutrition. Um, and it's exciting for me because I started this, like I said, 22 years ago. The brand's been through ups and downs. I've been through, you know, I, I, I got to you a little personally by going through a divorce. And, you know, I, I basically, you know, had to practically almost lost my business. So now I gained it back and I'm back in control. So it's very exciting for me. And I'm, I'm doing a lot more things involved in the fitness field um, since I am a little older. Um, and for it's called Ageless, Gaspari Ageless, which is an anti-aging brand. So I'm going to start that brand soon. Um, starting an online training system. I started a podcast during this whole pandemic. So I kept myself very busy. I wasn't like hiding under the bed during this <laughs> during this whole Clearly. time. Yes. <laughs> It's been so amazing to see the rise of Gaspari Nutrition. You mentioned some of the history there, but I do know that it actually started in your mother's basement, and now it's just turned into this crazy production. So to you, when you first started this years ago, did you ever see it getting to the point it was? Like, if you always had that vision of, hey, nothing's going to stop me, it can get that big? Um, I've always been a visionary, and I believe in, you know, positive um, outlooks on anything. Able to plan and you got to be able to you know you can't just like be a dreamer that doesn't work if you're going to have you're going to come up with something you have to say okay what's your plan you know how are you going to build this business what are the products you're going to start you know how are you going to sell this i mean a lot of things i had to think about when i started this and you know i i, I say to people you know i went to i went to university for a couple of years and then i turned professional bodybuilder so i never finished my you know my college but 
I went through the college of hard knocks because I learned a lot more as an entrepreneur um, than someone going through school. And, you know, school is great and I believe in college, but I believe that a lot of hands-on experience is, is much more uh, to an individual in, in, you know, in growing a business. And I've been through every single scenario that a businessman could think to think of besides going to jail. <laughs> but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> no, no. I, I, you know, like I said, I've, experience is very big. And if you can use experience and use that wisely to move forward and use it to your advantage, that's good. A lot of people stay in the past and, you know, when they go through difficulties, they don't know how to like take those difficulties and say, okay, how can I turn this around? And that's always been my mindset is always be able to think positive and think of solutions. Um, and that's what we've done. And, you know, I continue to evolve. Uh, even though I've been around for 22 years, the company now has evolved to grow again. We were we were at our peak 10 years ago. Then we went through difficulties, and now the company is growing again. It's so incredible how you can have so many highs and lows, and genuinely, if you put that passion towards it, come out positively on the other side. And I feel like what's been really cool for me is hearing that story there about those highs and lows and seeing how you've applied that same passion work ethic into bodybuilding, because mm -hmm. obviously uh, it's something that you already know, but you're going to go down in history as one of the most iconic bodybuilders in this industry. So did you take to conditioning and nutrition those aspects of the business fairly quickly, or did it actually take some time when you were in those uh, college university days? Um, I, I'm a very disciplined person, you know, so when it came down to me, like, you know, my diet, training, nutrition, again, it took planning and, you know, looking or assessing myself, you know, and being able to figure out how I'm supposed to, you know, lose body fat or get ready for a show. All the things that I've done with bodybuilding for me has been like a great experience to use that, you know, in business. So, you know, from being a bodybuilder very young, I mean, I won my pro shows at 20 years old. I was one of the youngest professional bodybuilders. And from there, um, becoming established, like you said, thank you for saying I'm going to be well known. But even though it's been many years since I competed, uh, I've, I'm still very well known as this bodybuilder that continues to, you know, evolve. And I believe in, you know, I believe everyone needs to be able to be in the moment, but don't stay in the past. What I did in the past and being that bodybuilder is great, but what am I doing now? It's always like, what are keep you doing evolving. now? Yeah, keep evolving. And I believe in, in, in always evolving uh, because if you stay in the past, you end up not going anywhere. No, it's a very good point. It's very obvious that you spend a lot of time working out, a lot of time in the gym. So I wanted to ask you, is there anything you see people do while you're at the gym that just completely gets under your nerves? Any any workout no-nos or anything that you're just like, oh my gosh, why am I witnessing this? Well, I, I've been doing this for many years, so I, I, I know how to train. I'm also, I, you know, even though I've been a professional bodybuilder and a built, you know, a world champion bodybuilder, I, a body build, a body, I was able to also certify myself as a certified trainer because I wanted to make sure about biomechanics, you know, and, and much more than just, you know, you could be a bodybuilder, understand, you know, the body. And I wanted to, I always love knowledge. Knowledge, what to do is continue to learn. But yeah, a lot of people training in the gym, they do exercises horribly. I sometimes am very nice to try to say, hey, you know, if you do it this way, you'll get better results. Um, but it's very hard because a lot of people just think they know what they're doing. So I kind of let them do their own thing, you know? <laughs> I can imagine you going up to someone just being friendly, like, hey, just want to give you some advice. And then almost, you know, not being knowledgeable about the profession that you're in and being like, who are you to give me advice? And it's like, <laughs> I can just yeah. imagine that going down. And that, and that does like, happen. That does happen. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. And it's like you are literally the epitome of someone you would want advice from. So that cracks me up. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I know that comic books actually had a huge part in you wanting to get into bodybuilding. And this was at a very young age of around 10 years old. So yeah. which superheroes did you see and want to emulate the ones that had all the muscles well, that just looked larger than life? I, I was a big comic book uh, fan and I had a big collection of comic yeah. books. And, you know, as a kid, I was I was I was a bit of a loner. I wasn't this kid that my, my dad was a little older 
and he was a he was a construction worker, a blue collar worker. So he'd come home late. He never really taught me how to play sports. Um, so when I was younger, I was a little um, I wasn't really good or coordinated to play baseball or football. So I was one. Believe it or not, I was one of the kids that were picked last, you know, on the team because I was not very good at playing baseball or football. Um, so. I started reading comic books as a young kid and I would look at these superheroes as like, wow, are these really, you know, this is really cool. And I would get into that world of, you know, these comic book heroes. But really what got me into bodybuilding is, is a friend of mine. Um, I went to his house and then I went into his basement and his dad collected old muscle builder magazines. So when I went down there, I started looking at these magazines of these bodybuilders like Arnold Schwarzenegger and Lou Ferrigno and, and, and I looked at these people and I go, oh, my God, these are real. They look like real like superheroes. superheroes. <laughs> <laughs> so it got me very intrigued to look at that and say, there's actually people that look like this. And how do I do it? So I'd go to this guy's house, this kid's house, when I was like 10 years old. You know, after reading comic books, I wanted to read these muscle magazines. And I would sit there reading the magazines. And he'd be like, hey, are we going to play upstairs? And I'd be like, no, no, let me, let me sit in your basement and let me read these magazines. Because he wouldn't let me take them because his dad knew every single magazine. So I couldn't, like, take any of them. So I had to eventually ask my mom. I said, hey, can I buy these magazines? They're like, why would you want to buy these <laughs> muscle magazines? But I was just very intrigued by it because I wanted to be, I wanted to be built. And eventually, you know, I got my first weight set when I was about – 14 13 or 14 years old and i just as soon as i started lifting it was something you know what bodybuilding is it's a very individualized sport so you can sit there and train and not you don't need a coach or anyone although today all bodybuilders have coaches but back then it was something that you can do on your own and not be judged if you're playing baseball you're judged at how you you know throw a ball or how you bat but when you're bodybuilding it's something you can do on your own and that's and it's something I, I just love to do. You mentioned how you actually started buying the magazines. I know you ended up collecting quite a few. So how large did that collection end up being? And do you still have that collection to date? Unfortunately, I, I had probably three, four hundred magazines. But unfortunately, what happened was is I I had a lot of that stuff in my mom's house and my mom's house burned down. So I went uh, through losing everything I had and owned uh basically gone through a fire a house fire that i actually saved my mom from the fire you know when this happened so it was oh it was gosh. a tragic moment yes <laughs> what a crazy story i hadn't heard of that before yeah, yeah, yeah. i mean hey everyone was safe that's what matters in the end yes. but rest in peace to the magazines right? yeah. <laughs> well that's another thing magazines are totally gone now um and it's such a new era of you know people your age that follow everything through social media and that's the new way of learning about you know training and dieting and what's good about it is there's a lot of information out there but there's a lot of bad information and Definitely. you know people follow what's bad is a lot of the younger generation look at people on their followers and if this if the guy's got a million followers he got to know what he's saying but he could be just very popular but really not be a good trainer or, or not know what he's you know, saying or he's going to give bad advice. That's the unfortunate thing. But what's great about you know, the web and you know, social media is you can find anything out there. And if, if I had that when I was a kid, I mean, it would be the sky's the limit. But I mean, I had to learn everything through these magazines and you know, through just fantasizing you know, what I wanted to do. But now things are so up to the minute live, you can sit there and chat with a with your you know your bodybuilder, your pro bodybuilder, and you know you can listen to these bodybuilders online. So it's it's a much different world today. Well, I know that you didn't have access to everything we do now, but it definitely seems like your route worked for you. So kudos. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, we talked about evolving. I you know a lot of guys like you said, an old dog can't learn new tricks. I've definitely evolved today's market and what to do you know there's a lot of companies that you know that are my age and trying to learn how to deal with today's market and don't understand it because you know you're dealing with millennials and how people you know you know their buying patterns and you got to learn about you know making sure 
you're authentic. You want to be authentic in anything you do. And, and I think that resonates when I speak. I'm very authentic in what I'm doing. I'm not right. trying to be fake. And I think that's what resonates out there to, you know, to keep me relevant and popular. I always find the more genuine you are and the more open you are with people, people seem to relate to that the most. So um, you can definitely tell that when you're posting stuff, whether it's the passion, the excitement, uh, you get people on board because they can just tell that you actually care about what you're doing and what you're promoting. Definitely. I, I mean, I don't, I don't believe in, you know, of course I'm doing, I'm, you know, I, I do this for a living to make money, but it's not, my passion is not about making money. My passion is helping people. And, and that's been always my passion. And if I ever did this just to make money, I wouldn't do it. You know, I, I love what I do. I love being involved in, in something that, you know, you asked me about training. I still train six days a week, every day. I get up at five o'clock in the morning. I go to the gym early. I work very long because I'm doing multiple businesses so I can work 10, 12 hour days. And it doesn't bother me because it doesn't feel like work to me. It does feel like I'm, you know, doing something I enjoy. Now I am a family man, so I have to spend time with my my children, you know. So it it's you know you have to kind of be balanced with your time as well. No, it's fantastic you've been able to live out that dream and those passions. Uh, but at the same time, you know, a little bit of money here and there is a nice bonus too. It's a nice little yes. touch. <laughs> it's good to make it's good to make money in what you enjoy to do. And when you and when you do things you enjoy you really don't call it work for me it's not right. in doing what i'm doing but to me it's what i love to do well the last thing that i want to ask you about is the fact that you have one of the most badass nicknames being the dragon slayer so when was the first time you were coined that or given that name or did you give it to yourself how did that kind no, of come no I didn't, I didn't give my i didn't give that name to myself it was actually a writer his name was jeff everson and when I compete, when I was competing, I was as passionate as I am as a businessman. I would go out there, like like you said, badass, that I was undefeated. And I would beat a lot of guys that were much bigger than me. I was known to be one of the most, you know, ripped bodybuilders of my time. I, in that era, I was able to be the most ripped bodybuilders that set a standard in the entire sport. So he he wrote an article saying this guy fights off much bigger bodybuilders like a dragon slayer you know dragon a dragon slayer is someone that defeats a dragon which is the impossible and and i was always known as the underdog when i when i was bodybuilding i was always known as the guys like oh, he's never going to go anywhere but i ended up being one of the best bodybuilders in the industry um you know m many guys that had better genetics weren't able to beat me because of my mindset i was able to go in there with a positive outlook and you know, Lee Haney was an eight-time Mr. Olympia. He goes, I've never seen the passion, the work ethic, the positive thinking, and, and what the Rich Gasparri had. And there were guys that were much better than me, say physically, but I was able to overcome and become one of the best bodybuilders. That's absolutely incredible and super inspirational. Um, definitely going to go down in history as one of the greats. So thank you so much for thank taking you. the time for hopping on here. I'm so glad we finally made this happen. So, I know. Yeah, just thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Everyone, this has been Rich Kaspari. I'm the interview queen, Alicia Toot. Be sure to check out aliciatoot.com for all exclusive interviews and features. And we will see you all next time. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.